So this video is going to be looking at something called variables when we're using algorithms and programming. So a variable is literally a storage location for a data value that has an identifier. You might be thinking, what the heck? Another way of saying it is this. This is Sonic the Hedgehog. On the screen right now, we have four variables. We've got score, time, rings, and lights down here. Without a variable, imagine playing Sonic. Oh, wrong button. Ah, it's frozen. Okay, imagine playing Sonic, and let me just pause it for a minute until it unfreezes. So, imagine playing Sonic, and every time you collect a ring, it forgets that you've collected a ring. Imagine dying. Kill me and it forgetting that you've died so it won't take off a life. That would happen if you didn't use variables. Variables will remember literally data during the program. So it'll remember my lives, it'll remember my rings, it'll remember what time I'm on, it'll remember my score until I close down the game. When I close down the game and reopen it, everything will start on zero again. So, let's take this. Imagine we've got a box and inside this box we're going to call it rings and every time I get a ring it gets put into the box so I start on zero I collect a ring so number one will be in the box I collect another ring so number two will become in the box. I collect another ring. Number two disappears. Number three gets into the box. I just ran into a monster, so I've lost all my rings. So it goes back to zero again. A variable is like a box where it stores the data. And it stores one piece of data at once. So let's do lives. Now in Sonic, you start on three lives. Let's imagine I've just died, that 3 will disappear and it will change to 2. And that is what we call a storage location. Storage location. For data. In this case, rings and lives. So let's imagine that we're playing a game and the game which we're making is I'm going to create on the computer is a card game where literally it's got a card, a playing card, and it's turned down. And when you flip it over, you've got to say which number is on the back of it. So is it number three, number two? So let's say it's one to ten. Now you only have four guesses. So let's flip over card number one. Let's imagine that you said it's going to be number two. You flip it over and it's actually the number nine. Guesses will become one. You then get another card and you flip it over. You said it's going to be the number five this time, but it ain't. It's a number one or ace. Guesses becomes two, etc., etc. So how do we actually write this out in structured English? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've actually already done this already. So, let's do set guesses to zero to start off with. So what we've done is, with this, we've created what's called a variable, which will be our storage location. It will remember in our game, how many guesses we've had. So, there are rules when you're making variable names. So let's take player name. If you want to store a player name. What do you notice about this? There are no gaps. There's no spaces, it's all one word. I should have really done that. Player name with a capital N capital P, all one word. 
So there should not be any spaces in a variable name. So if I wanted to do a variable called number of guesses instead of guesses, it would be number of guesses. You can put underscroll. So you can actually use underscroll between the words. That is allowed. You can't use symbols like at signs or exclamation marks in variable names. This is called a naming convention. Naming convention. And that basically means whenever you want to make a variable to store something. So let's imagine that we're making a game right now. And the game is going to be the guess the card game. The first thing we want to do is basically store the name of the person playing the game. So we need to create a variable. And we're going to call it player name. This is a naming convention for our variable. It's allowed. Remember, a variable is a storage location. It's like a box to store the data which we're using in the game. When we turn up a game, it forgets everything. The next video is going to look at actually how we use variables in a little bit more detail.